Hello and welcome to a, another quick installation demonstration of a smart connector. In this case uh, we're going to install it onto Windows. So I just run the shortcut and here we go. So straight into the install anywhere uh, on Packager as it runs the install mechanism. Um, in this particular example I'm just going to set up a very simple uh, syslog server uh, on running on Windows just to receive log data and uh, send it on to Logger. So the installation process I'm going to do a, a graphical install it does actually work from a command line uh, as well as you can run it as a silent install as well and that's absolutely fine but in this case I'm actually going to talk through the settings and the options that we have available in doing this. Um, it, we're being presented with a uh, in unsupported platform that is absolutely correct. I'm trying to install it onto my uh, Windows uh, workstation, uh, which is running Windows 7 which is unsupported. Uh, that's for no other reason than uh, it's not a server. So uh, in this particular example I can run it, it will work perfectly, it will actually work uh, for a test environment, that's absolutely fine. However from a production environment you must, must, must run it on a Microsoft server platform uh, because it is acting as a server. So uh, just be aware of that one for a second, that's to do with the end user license agreement for Microsoft. So uh, we jump into the install process and we are guided through the step steps we need to go through. Now where would we want to install it? Now it would automatically go into some sort of program files uh, location. Uh, in this particular example I could do that uh, but we would like to try and keep some sort of naming construct that allows us to have a little bit more consistency uh, with how we want to break that down. So we often uh, have a mechanism that allows us to, to have a, a simple structure to uh, understand the, uh, what's where with regards to the folders and, and so on. Um, so what we do is we uh, set a particular folder location that's uh, logical and sensible uh, for what we want to do. So top level uh, folder of Arcsite. In this particular case uh, it's going to be the uh, uh, syslog connector I'm going to do. So connectors for example and then syslog for a, just to put it in there. Uh, of course for, you'd have different uh, folders to contain different connectors based on the uh, protocol that they're using. So for example in this case is a syslog for the syslog connector. And of course if it was for Oracle they would maybe put it into a separate folder called Oracle or if it was EPO then a separate folder for EPO accordingly because it's using different protocols to collect the, the, the data accordingly. So in this particular case it's not one uh, connector for every single server it's uh, receiving on that particular protocol. So we'll stick it into that folder and off we go. Uh, I got an option of doing a custom install uh, but I'm not going to worry about that for too much uh, and in we go and uh, what do we want to do for, with regards to links and so on. I'm actually not going to worry about that. Uh, and carry on accordingly and actually do the install mechanism. Now I, I'm installing this as administrator on my particular workstation. Uh, just be aware that uh, it's actually installing the JVM, the Java runtime environment for this, uh, which you may have some issues with certain antivirus on a workstation basis. Uh, that's unlikely to be the case on a server platform, so you don't need to worry about that. So it's just finishing the install now and just preparing the final bits of the configuration. As part of this process, uh, what we're doing is we, we, we have just one installer, uh, either for the 32-bit or the 64-bit version, and then as part of the installation process, we personalize it to the particular connector type. So we go through this install, and now we're presented with a, uh, an option to actually select what kind of connector it is. We could enable FIPS, FIPS mode as well, but we're not going to do that in this case. So we're going to add a particular connector and we've got a nice big drop down box of all the various different options that are available to us. So I can see that there's my syslog daemon that I'm going to install for a Windows platform. Uh, I select that and click next. It now gives me the options for this particular connector type so I can tie it to a particular IP address if I wanted to, change the port or even select uh, TCP with regards to uh, the receiving side of things. The syslog ng1 will also do TLS if you want to do that as well as a little extra uh, couple of steps for the installation process. This is just syslog uh, and of course if we're forwarding on to another uh, connector we'd actually set that to be false for that uh, to, to be true and in this case we're actually just going to send straight to a destination which is logger. So it's going to verify the properties and give me an option of where I want to send the log data to. So if it's a manager it would be to ESM or Express or to logger which is what we're going to do in this case or we can send to different uh, destinations whether it be common event format, uh, files, syslog, encrypted syslog, even actually the original raw syslog sending it back out again. So we have a number of options there of how we want to do that and of course you can have multiple destinations to send the data to multiple different uh, systems. 
So in this case, we're doing it to logger, make it nice and simple. We have a, a logger set to receive uh, this data, so that's no problem at all. Uh, and the, the receiver name I actually define here. I've something I've done uh, previously before. Uh, and it's got to be the exact name that's defined on logger. Uh, in this case, uh, it, the capitalization is relevant, so be careful with that one. I could also turn on a com a, the compression side of things. Uh, I'm actually going to leave it as disabled, uh, but of course you can enable it and disable it later on a per connector basis too. So we click next. It actually does a check to the destination to see whether it's uh, available and whether it can actually communicate with it. So it has done and checked uh, against the logger there accordingly. Uh, so now we just give it some logical names. So Windows Syslog. And this is running on my laptop. Uh, I can put some comments accordingly. Hit next. It does the final part of the registration. Uh, and sets up the destinations accordingly uh, and then gets it ready for the final stage of the configuration. And here we go, ready to go. Hit click next. So we have an option of setting as a service or running as standalone. Uh, do be aware, you just need to be cautious on this with regards to the uh, at which point if you're accessing a mapped folder on Windows, for example, uh, so older style uh, IIS type servers, uh, then make sure that you are setting it correctly and using the right uh, usernames and passwords to do that with the right mapping process because of course it won't appear as a service necessarily. So just be careful on that one. So actually I do want to install it as a service. Uh, I then give it a logical name. Now just to differentiate it, you probably want to give it a bit of an internal name that's referenced to ArcSight or something. So give it that name. It will actually put ArcSight in front of the display name and call it ArcSight Syslog Daemon. And do we want to start it automatically? Yes. Uh, and then we finish that. We're now given an option if we want to continue to do some further setting changes if we want to. So we can modify some properties. We can uninstall various uh, the service. We can enable FIPS and so on. But in this particular case, I don't want to do anything else. I hit next uh, and then I can exit. And then we're done. And that is the process required to install a very simple syslog connector on a Windows platform. Thank you very much.